Welcome, welcome, welcome to Basketball Heads Live. It's scorching. Welcome. I'm your host, Glenn Poole Harding. And tonight, tonight is going to be epic. We have a great, great, great host. That's me. And a great guest. You're going to find out tonight. This basketball head is a Cardoza High School great. And all city performer. He grew up in Queens Get the Money, playing at Lincoln Park, watching his older cousin Lamar Odom become a legend. With the guidance of his older brother, he learned the blueprint of the game. This basketball head personifies a true New York City playground legend and a fixture on the New York City Hoop Summer Circuit. His personality outshines his opponents on the court with his lightning quick speed and that stopping go hezzy, one of the best in the game. My guy D told me one day he was at the game and saw him do that move and the whole crowd was like, <coughs> facts doing his thing. And oh yeah, he can shoot that deep ball too. Even being a little undersized, he can simply play above the rim with the best of them. All right. Now, unlike most playground legends, this basketball head gave the same work on the major university level, starring at St. John's, becoming the leading scorer all four years. He was named All Big East. Listen, brother and sisters, y'all going to hear more. I'm just to let you know. I'm going to let him tell the rest. But after leaving St. John's, he played for the Albany Patroons and now is CEO of SPD Training and is grooming the next generation of ballers. So without further ado, help me welcome to the show, Daryl Showtime Hill. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Yes. 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 You have you just have stepped out into, into, into the world, world of chaos, chaos. Where, where everybody, everybody goes, goes hard. hard. What's up, man? What's up? What's up? How you feeling? Uh, I'm great, man. Now listen, brother. Let me tell you something, man. I'm not ashamed to say when I hear somebody play, right? Yeah. I've seen them all. I've seen a lot of people play. But when I didn't, when I don't see someone play, I got to go ask my guys who I know is out in the circuit all the time watching all the games and sometimes right. even participating. And when I played that song, brother, when I was talking to my guy D, that song was the song that was actually robbed by somebody was playing that as he was telling me that. Oh, word. Wow. So as he was telling me the story, somebody was bumping that song. And he was like, exactly. Yeah, man. Yeah. You missed a lot, so, man. If you didn't see it, man, you missed a lot. <laughs> look, I caught up. Trust me. <laughs> I, I know I didn't catch up on everything. But, brother, let me tell you. I just want to give you your flowers now and say Appreciate it. You deserve to have your crown and your flowers given to you. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. And thank you for what you did for New York City and still doing. No doubt. No doubt. Appreciate it. All right. So what i like to ask everyone is, who introduced you to the game? Well, my brother, my brother Cliff, um, he was the first person that introduced me to the game. And um, pretty much at four years old, um, I was kind of introduced, and after that, man, you know, I kind of loved the game. It, it was a, uh, it was something that I loved to do. It wasn't something that I liked to do. It was like, man, once I learned how to play, you know, I was out there every day, you know, waking people up, bouncing the ball five in the morning. I was some people alarm clock, man. They would say, you know, <laughs> but um, yeah, man, those those were the those were the days. My brother Cliff played 
um, college college ball. He played high school ball at Hillcrest, and then he went to Farmingdale. So he knew the game. You know, okay. of course, about, you know, family. My cousin Steve Little. You know, he went to Jama Jamaica High School, and then I uh, went to Delaware Delaware State University. So you know, I was kind of you know prepared for the game early. So where you where you from in Queens? I'm from South Jamaica, Queens. Um, that's Linden Boulevard and 134 off the Van Wick. Yeah, so. Yo, let me tell you. I had to say this, my guy. Salute to my guy, Chris Haney. 40, Pre uh, 40 Projects official. When I told my head, John, there, he was like, yo, brother, I know you know where a lot of these guys come from, but when my guys are, that come from Queens around my way, ask them where they're from so they can say South Side Jamaica, Queens. Right, man. South Side is a big part of Queens, man. We had a lot of wars right. with the North Side, too. <laughs> Listen, I, when I had Kenny Anderson up here, I didn't realize he got some of his game and grew up on the South Side as well. Yeah, man. You'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. I did a lot of work out there on Left Right, too, man. You know, a lot of places, of course. But, um, you know, Queens is heavy, definitely, on, on a basketball tip. Cool. Now, you was talking about your brother, right? How yeah. big of an influence was he on your life and you developing as a man? Man, it was huge, man. Um, a lot of stuff he taught me that's on the court, you know, kind of related to off the court also. You know, as a young as a young player, though, as a young kid, you know, it doesn't really hit you at, at that moment. But, you know, as I got older, you know, I started seeing things. And that's what makes my, you know, my training kind of good, you know, a little better than than usual because I'm able to – you know, give them my life experiences and they can kind of, you know, see it from there instead of making a mistake, you know, or going through the mistake. They can kind of, you know, see it and hear it from somebody that's been there already. Cool. Do you remember your first game, like your very first game that you played, and how was that? Um, I say I don't remember my first game. Um, I remember kind of just playing with my brother and my cousin, you know, a lot of the times because they brought me to their games. So, you know, I was kind of a guy that got in the game when they was up by 30. You know, I go in there, I throw it through somebody's legs, make the crowd go crazy, that sub me out. And, you know, the anticipation, you know, they want to see that again. Hold on, hold on. Time out, time out, time out. <laughs> you was doing this early on, like you just didn't get the game and was nervous because a lot of us, when we get in that first game, we kind of like shell shot. Right. Right? Because a lot going on. Right, right. Finally got the uniform on, the referees are there, people on that stands. You come first game, you throwing it through people's legs? Man, listen. You was, was showtime from the beginning. Yeah, man. I was advanced when I was young, man. I was real, real advanced. Um, you know, I just used to, I used to like having fun with it, you know. And, you know, all the work I that I used to do training, working hard every morning, getting up, you know, that kind of, that kind of helped me to be comfortable in the game. You know, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't feeling the way about my shot or feeling like I couldn't handle because that's what I did all day, every day. So when I got in, I knew we was up 30. I'm like, I'm gonna have fun, you know? And you know, my, my brother, you know, my cousin, they're, they're encouraging. They're like, man, go have fun, go do what you do. So, you know, that kind of helped me out a lot, man, just having fun with the game. But, um, yeah, man, my first game, I, I think it was at, I want to say in back of Royal Wilkins. Um, I want to say behind there, but I'm not sure exactly where. Say, so, uh, who is this? Uh, see, I don't want to say the name wrong. I see, uh, Zygers at the end. I remember him at 10 years old at Lost Battalion. Oh, he yeah. was nice back then. Salute. Yeah, Lost Battalion, man. Definitely. Um, You know, I played with Aim High, too, for a little bit. So with okay. Kenny Smith. And, um, you know, we had a we had a squad. So, you know, I, you know, I always played with, you know, Queens teams, you know, until I got a little older. But I was always Queens, man. Queens all day. That's real. That's real. What was your cousin the best in the neighborhood at the time? Um, no, nah, not in the neighborhood. You know, he was more like a defender though. He'll he'll lock you up. So, you know, as far as scoring and making the crowd go ooh and ah, it wasn't really 
his game, but he'll lock you up. He'll make sure you ain't you ain't gonna score no buckets on him. You know, my my brother was more of a you know the point guard. He, he gonna get to his spots. He, you know, assist. You know, he'll score every now and then. But you know that 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 was the era I kind of you know grew up in. You know, I had the I had more of the talent. You know, than them, but they had the work ethic and they had the structure and everything for the game. So it kind of meshed well. Now, listen, this is important for kids because a lot of kids will say, yeah, I'm nice, but they don't mention those intangibles that you just mentioned about your brother and your cousin. Right. Now, you got to have it, man, because, you know, in this game, there's going to come a time where things are going to become tough. And, you know, you having that structure and discipline is going to help you push through that mentally and physically. You know, so, you know, those times right there helped me when I was in college when we had to run you know six miles and we had to do other things i was able to push you know the players that was behind me you know so you know that that's going to really help and then you know the coaches and scouts they see that man you know they they, they recognize things like that and they don't want to recruit a player that they're going to have you know mental issues with or things you know off the court for our school you know so they definitely need to pay attention to that appreciate that brother when you was coming up, what parks had the most action? I, I'm from what I'm hearing, you're the Lincoln Park guy. Everybody's like, that's the home. That's the home yeah. park. Yeah, Lincoln Park. That's that's definitely home, man. Um, I stayed across the street, so it was it was my backyard. You know, when it was time to eat, my mom would be like, time to eat. Yell out the window, and I just run in to eat, come back out and play again. You know, so it was a little different. You know, <laughs> I, I'm living in North Carolina right now, so. Here is kind of what you know. It's different where you got to drive to every every gym. You got to drive to a park. You know they don't have the luxury of you know playing against somebody that's living right next to you. You know, or that's going to be in that same park with you. You know, battling. So you know that's the difference I see. But you know, I think shoot, they, there's a lot of talent out there, man. You know, especially skill wise, they got it. They just don't have the the discipline. Now, I, I I mentioned earlier in my intro uh, that you was related to Lamar Odom. Is that true? Did you hear me? Yeah, well, he's he you know. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. You heard me? Yeah, yeah. So the reason, one of the reasons why. Uh, I started Basketball Heads is because I, I was watching uh, Lamar on Drink Champs, and it's not a knock to Nori and Drink Champ. We're past that. I still watch and support this show. Um, but I just felt like right. our fraternity right. needed a place like their hip-hop guys got a place to feel safe and come on and, and tell your story without right. you know right. being backdoor. And I'm not saying that happened. But we need a uh, platform like this so guys and now basketball fraternity can come and get that rightful love that they deserve. So that that, that kind of yeah. motivated me. Yeah, man. You, you know, know that, along with definitely... my best friends pushed me to do this over three years ago and I didn't pay attention, but now we're here. Yeah. Nah, man. We're late than never. You know what I mean? Because we need a platform for this, you know, especially for guys that you probably forgot about or, you know, have moved out of state and they probably don't hear because they're not in the city, you know, but of course I'm trying to make, you know, make a difference, you know, what no oh. All right. So cool. I'm gonna bring my man Mel in real quick and see what he cooked up. All right, cool. Stay right there. I'm gonna bring my man, uh, resident artist Jamel Powell. All right. See what he cooked up. Mel, you there? All right. He's usually in the studio with us, uh, but since Instagram got this thing where we can, you know, put three or four people in a room. This makes it a lot, lot convenient. We see if we can get them on.
But we'll wait till you come on. But um, yeah. So there you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of hard that red is. Oh, look. Okay. See, I told you, show. He put like two or three pictures in one. Send it to me, Mel, so I can send it to him, all right? All right, got gotcha. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. The, the pink kind of makes it hard to see. But I know he did that shit crazy. I can see right there. He got you with the with the white jersey on. Yeah. All right, Mel. All right, no doubt. He said, <laughs> but you're gonna get the original as well. Uh, All right. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So now. Let's move on to right to now you get into uh high school, right? After you playing a lot of tournaments, figuring yourself out. Yeah. Uh did you play uh, yeah, uh high school bit, basketball though. or you straight in high school? Hello? You there? Can't hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, that's hot, man. I okay. It. You see it? There we go. Yeah, connection is crazy, man. Got a storm out here. Okay, okay. So that's what I said. Use your phone internet and not the, not the house internet. Yeah, 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 yeah. I turned that uh, Wi-Fi yeah. joint on. Yeah, because that's yeah. It's a little more stable. All right. So what, what we talking about now, we have to, you know, go into get to junior high school. Tell me about that. Yeah, so junior high school um, was kind of like, you know, my my beginning point. You know, um, you know, I was serious about it, but, you know, I wasn't really at that point yet to where I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm really a die, die, die hard. Um, I think um, me just playing, you know, having fun with it, you know, kind of got me to really love it. You know, and Coach Danzler, you know, he was there my seventh grade and eighth grade year. So he kind of, you know, prepped me up, um, you know, working on skill stuff, you know, getting up shots and stuff. So, you know, it was a good, it was a good thing. We had Daryl Boykins. He was pretty good. Um, Lenny Cook went to our school too, but he didn't play. He was just, just one of those kids that, yeah, he, he wasn't even um, playing ball like that yet. You know, seventh grade, he was kind of, you know, in the beginnings, but he wasn't good at all, man. He was. You know, he couldn't walk and chew gum at the same time, man. Wow. I'm yeah. about to have his son up, y'all. I actually had to reschedule with his son. Uh, how, how how good is the son? I think his son could be really good, man. He um, long, you know, can shoot it. You know, um, I think Lenny handled the ball better a little bit. Um, but I think, you know, his son got it. You know, it just, you know, it's just a matter of time of him, you know, getting enough reps, you know, and the right person seeing him. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be something. But you know, these kids all really have the same thing. They don't have the you know, um, how can I say uh, the talent we was playing against is different. You know, we had guys that was more physical. You know, we played in the same era where the hand check. You had the hand check rule. We had all of that. So it was <laughs> Tell physical, it. Talk man. That like, talk. That's right. Yeah, it was totally different. So right now, you know, even at you know at the youth. At the youth age, you can't really touch like that. You know, as soon as you touch them, bam, it's a foul. You know, so it takes the, you know, the toughness out of it, out the game. But, you know, the talent and the skill is, you know, what you need right now. Real, real talk, real talk. What were there any hurdles that you, that you had there? Camera, that man. You? He had another one out there. Yeah, you know, doing good. What you said again? Say that again. I can't hear you.
Cameron. Uh, Cameron Tyler. Now he was, uh, uh, he had said something in a, in a little okay, comment. Okay, okay, okay. You can hear All me right. now? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Me? Or not? I can hear you. Yep. Yep. So what what made what made Carl Dozer you speak out, out of all the schools? Yeah, I can hear you. Let me see. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Testing one, two, one, okay. two. Can you hear me? You hear me? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear everything we're saying. Give me a thumbs up in the room. You good? All right, I think it's a little delay. Oh, okay, okay. Gotcha, but it'll all, it'll all come together once we finish the live. Man, what up, man? Damn, it's crazy. Yo, brother, trust me. I I've done experience so much in doing these shows in the last year. So <laughs> I, I just learned to be patient. I used to panic. When things like this used to happen, yeah. maybe a, a hundred shows ago, I used to panic, like, oh, fuck, what the hell? But yeah. then I watch it later on, and it all comes together. So I used to panic and wanted to be like, yo, let's just do it another time. Like, right. we're actually right. good. Right, right. Okay. Right. So. But why, why Cardoza? Yes, yes. You, you could have went to Hillcrest, follow the family. Yeah. Um, well, Cardoza was a, a better place for me because, you know, I was away from you know, the hood, I was away from guys that was probably going to lead me to some trouble. So, you know, being at Cardoza, there was nothing but whites, Chinese, you know, guys that I didn't know. And um, in order to get in there, into Cardoza, you had to have a 90-point average. You know, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, so, or, you know, you can go through the dance program. So I had to go through the dance program, you know, to get in Cardoza. But I think that helped my footwork. You know, so shout out to Mr. Mendoza. That was my teacher right there. Okay. <laughs> no doubt, but, um, no doubt. But, um, but yeah, but Cardoza, um, you know, I just think the Clario, you know, he 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 kinda he kinda fought for me, man. He was the only white guy that came to the hood, watched the games, you know, no matter where where he was at, you know, he just worried about the kid and what he could do for him. So, you know, I I was I was you know, really fortunate to have a coach like him, you know, because, you know, there's a lot of coaches out there that's not really, you know, for they, for they player, you know, or back they player. And, you know, when I was at Doza, he let me, he, shoot, he let me play, let me shoot, you know. Um, so I, I, I ain't had no problems with it, really. You know, it was a great experience. Let me tell you, man, back in the 80s, right? Uh -huh. The Clario. Used to coach with a guy named uh, Hirsch <laughs> from Western House. Yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. I was on those early teams, right? Me coming from Lincoln, I was like the only guy from Lincoln to ever play with that crew. My <laughs> coach would tell me, stay away from them. But all my guys played with them. You know, I'm from across town. Right. So we used to go up to Saratoga Springs, you know, all these places, these prisons to play. Right. And, you know, our uh, guy who was funding everything was this guy named uh, Fix, Richie. Okay, okay. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. So, not to go too deep into it, but this is what I'm saying. Young coach Hirsch, an Italian man, two Italian men, and a Jewish man helped us out tremendously. I'm yeah. talking about, they took us places, they opened our eyes. I'm talking about expensive restaurants. The first time I went to a real expensive restaurant was with Hershey the Clario. That's what I'm trying to say, yeah. I'm talking about sweaty and all. Right. They would create space for us. I've never had that done to me as a child. Like, what the hell? Was, but you're not taking it all in. Right. And the impact that they had on black kids' lives. It's tremendous, man. So, right. salute, Coach. I definitely gotta have you on here. Oh yeah, Coach McClario. For sure, man. for sure. Big time, man. It's big time. Yeah, I speak to uh, uh Rich Constant, former director of the ABCD camp. We talk like once a week. Um, 
And he's always like, Glenn, did you get a Clarion on? Come on, Glenn, you got to get a on. So I feel bad I got to get him on, man, because I had all the coaches on here already. Yeah, you got to get them on, man, definitely. You know, say the best for last, man. That's that's it. Yeah, yeah. Had a mole on here, though. That's right. That's right. How, yeah. what, what did he do to prepare you for the next level? Y'all know he said, you know, you, he let you shoot and play your game. But what else did he do? Man, one day, um, it was like, I would say about 10 o'clock. It was about early morning. Um, I was supposed to have been in class. So he seen me sneaking out and he kind of, you know, kind of wrestled me down. Hit me with his forearm. Like, what are you doing? What do you think you're doing? You know, so you know that kind of opened, you know, opened my eyes up because I seen that he cared more, you know, about my off, you know, my my, my, my books and off the off the court things instead of on the court. Um, which he cared about a lot on the court, but off the court, man, he was on you. So no matter what, he had to, he had to fight you. And he had to, you know, you know, you in the hallway. That's what he was going to do to get your attention. But that really showed me, like, yeah, man, it's, it's not just about basketball. You know, it's about, you know, being a good person, being a good, you know, uh, a good man and showing people the way, you know, once you start to learn things, you know, and, you know, that's what I kind of learned from him because he's a dog hard basketball man, man. I mean, that dude, he wakes up in the gym, you know what I mean? So um, every Saturday we had practices and, you know, me being young, playing against Roy Ivey, Brian Woodward. That was my freshman year. Um, Damian Leslie, um, Dane Singletary, Ryan Williams. So we, you know, it was we were stacked, man. It was stacked. And, um, you know, I, you know, just competing every day in practice, man. That's that's what kind of you know got me where I need to go. The games must have been easy, damn. Yeah, the games are easy, man. You know. Um, you know, playing against them, it was, you know, even though I didn't play my freshman year a lot, I didn't play as much, but, but it kind of had me, you know, that summer. And then, um, you know, my sophomore, junior year, you know, I kind of took off. Um, but, yeah, it definitely helped me, man. The games were easy. I was kind of just floating in the games. I wasn't, it didn't feel like I was, you know, trying hard, you know. So I kind of knew that, you know, the work I was putting in, it was working. And I was going to keep doing it and staying dedicated because I knew where it was going to get me. My God, uh, Michael Blissett is on here. He said, speak on the show. Won that chip in 1999. Speak yes, on sir. that, man. And what sir. year was that for you? At the Garden um, versus Kennedy. Um, they had J.C. Mathis. And, uh, somebody Who I had on the show. We talked yeah, about that. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, man, that was that was tough, man. Um, yeah, that that year, you know, I kind of played. I, I played a little bit. We lost in uh, Glen Falls versus Rice. You know, Andre Barrett and them, man. He, he got us. But um, yeah, it was a good experience, man. Um, I think that you know with that team we had, man, we could have competed with you know with anybody in the city, you know. And I think with the teams they had with Lincoln. Kennedy, everybody was tough, man. So it could have been anybody here, but I think we had the better talent and you know, the guys that really wanted it. Um, but I really wanted the one thing I respect them. about the guys who came up in New York and played, that came up on the show, when you ask them about the battles and the other teams, they'll tell you, yo, G, there was no nights off, man. You may have like oh. one in the blue, but every night was a fight. Yo, Rice had Andre Barrett, Kenny Satterfield, Andre Sweet. Come on, man. Like, that's, that's not happening today. That's not happening right. today. No knock on the, guy, the guys who playing today. But that's just right. not happening today. Nah, it ain't, man. So it's like, you know, um, back then, it was, it, was, it, was, it was a dog fight every game, man. Every game was a dog fight, whether it was in Queens. You know, even when I, you know, scored 50 against Francis Lewis, that was a dog fight. Like, they didn't want me to score that 50. I was scratching and... You let out back. the bag. That was, that was coming, fam. That was coming. That was coming. <laughs> no, no, trust me. I'll pay attention to everything that's on my line. <laughs> I, I trust me. i pay attention. I wrote that yeah. down. I said, we're going to talk about that 50 piece. 
Yeah, man, that was um, that was a special part of uh, you know, my career. Um, and who was that on? Who who asked game. did you bust to get that fifty piece? I just Yo, I, don't even, I don't even I don't even remember. No disrespect to anyone out there, because I asked everybody the same question. Yeah, yeah, I, I can't do that. I don't even remember nobody on there, man. But um, I just knew I kind of I was on fire, man, and I you know I was in a zone to where anything I saw it would have went in. I could do it behind my back, it would have went in. You know. Um, I think I shot 20 for 26 and then um, five for like, I think it was like five for seven for three or something like that. It was something, it was something crazy, but yeah, I didn't miss that much, man, that game. And um, I came out with five assists too. So I had 50 and five assists with a few rebounds. Um, yeah, man, those. those Did you check your assists. score at halftime? Yeah, now the Claudio, he trying to sub me out because he can't want me to break the Steve, um, Steve, uh, Steve Wichams. I forget his last name, but Steve and record. And um, he didn't want, he didn't want me to break it, so he tried to sub me out. But then he subbed me back in, and I broke the record. Then sub me back out once I broke it. So, salute, you know, salute. Yeah, Your mouth got BG, Mr. Les. Express is on the check-in. He says Show and Ryan was the best one-two punch. Who's Ryan? And tell me about him. Ryan Special Effects Williams. Um, oh, got you, was, got you, got you, got yeah, you, got yeah, you. Yeah, so, so Ryan, um, <laughs> yeah, we've been playing with each other forever, man. You know what I mean? So me and his connection, you know, is probably better than anybody in the city. You know, I could kind of throw it up no matter where it is. He's going to catch it and dunk it, you know. So um, we've been playing, though, since shoot. Middle school, high school, you know, college, and then you know, a little bit pro, a little bit, but it wasn't really, you know, anything on the same team. It was more like you know, street ball stuff. But you know, we brought a lot of excitement. It was kind of the team that really never got a win. But I, you know, our games were always packed because we brought the excitement, we brought entertainment. You know, with me, Skip, Escalade, Ryan. Um, you know, Mark Jackson played with us. So, you know, we had we had we had a squad, man. You know, we just couldn't get over the hump. You know, that was the year Kobe played and you know, they had uh Eddie Curry, they had Stephon Marbury, you know, Fat Joe and them, they was kinda of monstering things. <laughs> was know, was so. Steve Francis playing out that year as well? Yes, sir. Steve Francis and Headick was on the main team. You know, so. I watched that game. <laughs> I, I post that game a, a couple of a, a, a clip of it a, a couple of months ago, but I definitely want that game. Crazy game. And listen, bro, people can say what they want. And I always tell guys when you playing against a pro and you do your thing, right? It means so much because these dudes really can play. Like right. why do you be seeing dudes on TV? And be like, oh, he a bum. Your fans. Right. Nobody in the NBA is a bum. Nobody, man. Everybody in the NBA, they earned their spot there. And if they, you know, if they bum, they wouldn't be there. You Facts. Know? <laughs> so, you know, I don't know where they get that from. But, you know, even overseas players, man, you got to be good to play, play, you know, professional anywhere. You some yes. talent, man. My guy DJ Don DeMarco said, tell them about you and Lamar in the backcourt, Lincoln Park. Yeah, that was when I was young, young, young. I was small, man. Um, yeah, those are the days of my brother. This, how you doing? First of all, fam, you said this like, yeah, I was small. Nobody getting on the court with a top-notch player that level and still see, shine. Like, everybody see, that, that, that was the year. See, that was the time when... You know, you remember on Sundays when they didn't let the little guys get on the court. That was those times. So I was able to get on the court. That meant something. You know what I mean? I was oh, able yeah. to still Fact. play. And, you okay. know, I was getting picked. I was getting picked over some of the old guys. And, you know, they coming to get their workout in for the Sunday. They're like, man, show messing my workout up. <laughs> so, you know, I kind of I kind of understand, you know. Um, but I think that helped my game, too, playing Sunday mornings. You know, it helped my IQ a lot, man. You know, I was always a guy that was, 
you know, I'll break you down, get to the rack. But they was able to teach me how to play, you know what I mean? Move, cut, you know, don't just stand in one spot. You know, so I definitely shout out to, you know, Lincoln Park, Tracy, you know, and others out there. So, for sure. You want to just stand in the corner like this. Why didn't you give me the right. ball? Right, right. Don't do that. <laughs> right. killing me like, your fam, would you move? I wasn't getting it at all, man. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so, what? When you came into your own, right? You talking about your junior, your sophomore, junior year, right? Yeah. Was it the senior year? Like, it was just like, okay, now I know how to do the damn thing. Because yeah. you start to get noticed by some really top schools. Yeah, my senior year, man. Um, shoot. I actually was, you know, being recruited by NC State, Texas. Uh, St. John's, Virginia. Um, believe that's it. But you know, it became it became well, Hofstra too. Yeah, Hofstra was you know a school I was kind of going to attend because Speedy, you know, Speedy was you know real cool with me because me and um, Mike Mike Claxton we played together with AU, you know, Long Island gotcha. Panthers. So, um, but yeah, man, um, it, it it was easy. I think I averaged thirty one. My senior year, I think 31. So, you know, of course, PSAL, you know, and everything. You know, I made everything. So, I think I got MVP that year, too, of the whole league. So, you know, I was killing that year, man. You know, I think I had 40 probably like four times in a row, five, four times in a row. Um, you know, just different. You know, it was just different, man. Um, that was the times, too, where Lamar would take me into L.A. I'd work out you know, out there, come back feeling like Superman. They're like, man, you know, I'm out there running past everybody. I'm getting that NBA work, you know, so it was different, man. Yo, you are different, fam. Let me explain something to you. Appreciate it. Dudes get the, the legend tag, right? You hear guys be like, oh, he's, a, you know, legend here, right? And they probably just did it in the park. And I'm knocked to that because it takes right. skill to do that there, too. Right. But when you do it in high school, you do it in college, and you do it in the park. Those three right. check marks, and I think we we really really start to make need a check mark for who we call legend because you know everybody calls himself a legend, right? It exactly. need to be like a check mark, right? Check. Right. Okay, did that check? All right, Corey, I'm the South Williams. So yo, G. When I played in the Rucker, I made sure one. It was prime time and getting played all over the world. Two, I made sure I didn't play with everyone. I played with the bum team so I could be the star. He had a plan. Right. He had a right. whole plan, a legend plan. He had the, the legend package. He said, you know right. what? I did A, B, and C, and D so I could get recognized. Was he good at high school? He went to Rice with, Lo with Felipe Lopez. Didn't even know who Felipe Lopez was. Man. Right. Okay. He did decent in, in, in college. Right. But his thing was, yo, G, none of that shit worked. I needed the streets. I needed the playground. Yeah. I mean, it's different because playing playing street ball is almost like playing in the NBA. You know, you're going to have – it's almost like if LeBron went to college, it would have been totally different because the zone and everything with his shooting – it would have been totally different. He would have been – he would have dropped. It wouldn't have been as high. He wouldn't have went as high. You know, same thing for street ball. Street ball is nothing but I'm going to guard my own man. So, in the NBA, if everything is I'm going to guard my own man and it's so spread out, I was a guy that was able to get to the basket at any time. So, if the court spread out like that and I'm able to get there, you know, it would have been easier for me, you know, NBA. You know, college was kind of hard because – we had the cues. We had the best zone in college. You know, yes. I had thirty. I had thirty three on that zone. You know, so I kind of knew, like, if I was able to do that, you know, one on one, ain't nobody guarding me. Crazy. Yo, salute to you, BJ. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you, man. Appreciate my God, man. Um, 
Yes, it's crazy, man. So that, that whole recruitment process, what made you choose St. John's? Why St. John's? Was it the whole city? Yeah, um, you know, St. John's had, you know, this rep where it was like, wasn't on top no more, or they wasn't going to get there. And I kind of wanted to be that player that was going to be able to change things along with, you know, Elijah Ingram, um, Grady Reynolds. They had a few, you know, Cal Cuff, you know, Marcus Hatton, you know, everybody that was there, um, Anthony Glover, of course. So, you know, I wanted to change things, you know, about St. John's and how people was looking at us. Because, of course, you know, I was from there, you know, and it's in, it's in Queens. It's in my city. So, you know, I wanted to represent and make St. John's look good. Um, you know, of course, it was tough. You know, we didn't have, you know, the talent that we needed, but we had guys that was putting in the work. We just needed more talent. Why, why you was at St. John's? Did the hood come and support you? Oh, man. They was at every game, man. Every game. Um, shoot, they, shoot, they was deep, too. So, you know they there. You're going to know they there. Um, yeah, the support was heavy. Queens was definitely in the building, man. That's real. So yeah. what what transition did you have to make once you got to St. John's on and off the court? Well, on the court, um, I think I pretty much had to make um, the transition of getting stronger, getting faster. Um, in college, it's almost like starting over again, like being in high school, ninth grade. You know, you got a junior, senior that's, you know, that's stocky and strong. You, you know, you got to pretty much, you know, get your weight up. You got to, you know, put the work in conditioning-wise. So I think I, you know, I kicked that up a notch. And then, you know, off the court, it was mainly, you know, being, a, you know, um, you know, go to school, you know, and work out, then go to your games, being able to still get up and go to class. You know, that stuff right there was was challenging, but, you know, it helped it help in life. You know what I mean? It helps you be able to push through things, you know what I mean? And not soak and mope about you know, certain that don't matter. You know, as long as you're getting up and handling your business, everything's going to take care of itself. So, um, you know, I think that helped me out a lot. But, yeah, going from Cardoza, you know, to, you know, being on campus, man, it was totally, totally different, man. <laughs> you know, so that life just of, you know, hanging with your friends, your teammates, them being right there next to you, you know. And then I had, of course, my you know, my whole fam on campus campus you know so it was crazy man yeah I, I think kids need to hear that there's gonna be transitions in your life right yeah yeah <laughs> like you said start ninth grade all over again right <laughs> nothing's gonna come easy you gotta work for everything and i had uh terrence wrencher here right and i use him as an example great guy great basketball player great coach right he said, yo, G, I was playing the year in New York and then become the leading scorer in Texas University history. Mm. I get drafted and they want me coming at the end of the game. <laughs> like I can it, it didn't click in that I had to start over again. Right. And that's the thing that right. clicked out of right. it's, yep. it's a reset, it's a reset button. And, you know, and how you take it and how you, you know, um, overcome, you know, the hardship of it, you know, is going to make you a better player and a better person. You know what I mean? So, you know, me getting into college, you know, it, it kind of changed things because I wasn't really used to getting up five o'clock in the morning. You know, Mike Jarvis had his, his, his workouts and practice at 5 a.m. So, you know, me getting up. You know, at four, four thirty, being able to, you know, eat, get them in your belly and stuff like that, then get to workouts, you know, it was different. So I had to kinda, you know, figure that part out and then, you know, also just being able to um, you know, just realize that, you know, eyes are watching. So I had to be on my best behavior at all times, you know. It wasn't about just me, you know, it was about, you know, me being on campus and you know, there's guys and there's people that's going to be looking at you, you know, and you want to make sure you make a first impression and then a good impression at that. So, you know, I was I was always quiet and humble, you know what I mean, and carried myself well, you know, but of course, you know, when you start, 
you know, leading the league and scoring and doing different things, you know, of course that goes to your head a little bit. So, you know, that's what you want to try to control, you know, control that, you know, um, I'm the man, I can do what I want type thing, you know, and it kind of hurt me off the court too because I was just reckless, parking anywhere, $3,000 worth of tickets, you know, just doing whatever, you know what I mean, parking in front of the fire hydrant, you know, I'm late for practice, I'm just getting out, you know, so it's like, you know, that, that stuff like that really, you know, I mean, to understand, like, man, shoot, this, this is, this is bigger than just me, you know what I mean? And that's what some of these kids got to learn it, like, you know, there's a whole bunch of yous out here, you know, you got to try to make it, you know, the best way you can and be the best person you can, you know what I mean? Because I've seen a lot of times where good people, they get a lot of good opportunities just because of the other people they are, you know, the character they are. So it's like, you got to make sure you, you know, all around good to everybody, man. You know what I mean? Because you never know with that person or where that person is going in life. You know what I mean? He could be your boss later. He could be a GM. You know what I mean? So that's how you got to carry things. Yeah. So same people you see going up, same people you see coming back down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy how this happens, man. It happens like this all the time. I'll tell you a quick story. Uh... <laughs> Forgot this guy's name. He was the coach at Martin Luther King. Oh, I forgot this guy's name. Well, he went to Lincoln. Uh -huh. He got cut. My coach cut him four years straight. What? Yes. After he was not out, become so a coach at Martin Luther King. And this was Stefan was there. Oh, wow. Beats Lincoln with Stefan on the team. Wow, wow. And I asked my coach, you remember? My coach was like, can you remember the kid you cut? <laughs> right? I said, yo, you never know. You know, that didn't hurt my coach's career or anything, but that's just an example, right? I'm telling you, man, it's true. It's true, man. So they got to take heed into that, man. Because, I, you know, these coaches out here that's looking at how players walk to the bench, how players, you know, you know, after they get subbed out, what faces, you know, what faces they making or how they body language are, you know, so they're looking at a lot of stuff, not just how you play, you know, but, you know, a funny story with Grady, you know, mm -hmm. playing against Grady High School. I know you're from, you from Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I went to Lincoln, Grady right around the corner. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, Grady, you know, Grady had, of course, my boy, um, you know, uh, they had my boy uh, and Grady. Who they had? Uh, what they had Fresh Snap from Whitehead? Nah, little kid. Uh, I forget his name, man. But, you know, of course, G. Er, uh Robeson, not Grady. Robeson. Oh, Robeson. Okay, 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 okay. There you yeah. go. There you go. They, they had a monster. They had a monster team, man. And um, we scrimmaged them one day at Robeson. And I forgot what happened, man. But they fouled. Somebody fouled me hard as hell. They hit me hard as hell. And then my brother ran on the court and then they kind of surrounded me like oh i'm like man we ain't gonna leave brooklyn <laughs> but you know yo we got such a bad rap <laughs> Let me tell you, I, I tell guys when we was coming up no one came to brooklyn to play every we nah. had to go everywhere else to play Back yo then, that's what they had Bronx, Mike Harlem, Queens, no one came to brooklyn to play we had to play against each other and then we had to go to other boroughs to play against you know the other yeah. guys yeah, Brooklyn was wild, man. They had Mike Sherrod and then uh, um, Gary. Yes, Jones. yes, was... Jamel Jones and all those guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was tough. It was tough, man. So, them battles like wow. that, you ain't gonna get. You ain't gonna get no more, man. You ain't gonna get those type of battles. You yeah, know? that's crazy. So, yeah. how did you maintain be being the leading scorer all four years where they recruit all the time? It's not like they're not recruiting somebody in this spot. They do it. That's yeah. college basketball. Nah, I was um once I got to college, I kind of seen. I already had a goal, man. You know, and I seen, I seen NBA. That was in my head, you know, NBA, and I'm, you know, that was one of my things. And um, every day, you know, I work, you know, so I, you know, whoever was coming in after me or you know being recruited, he wasn't putting in the same work I was, you know, like I was going to LA, getting work with, you know guys I was already in the league. So, 
you know, it was different, man. I know the guy that was coming in wasn't doing that. So <laughs> I was, I, my confidence was through the roof, man. Like, but, um, you know, I think um, what also helped me too was, you know, to try to, you know, I think every day that I went in the gym, I kind of had my mindset on, you know, making every shot. You know, I think a lot of times when kids get in the gym, it's almost like I'm just I'm jacking up shots. I was focused on my, you know, my mechanics, you know, everything when I was shooting. So, you know, I had a rep where it was like, oh, shoot, you know. So I was always wanted, you know, wanted to prove everybody wrong, you know, as far as shooting. So I always worked on it, you know. But I think else was easy, man. Like, you know, getting to the basket, you know, creating, you know, you know, getting guys open. That was that was my thing. That was kind of my talent, you know. But, you know, once I developed shooting, it was over, you know, it was over with. Show. Sure. Okay. I got hurt my sophomore year. I wasn't the same. In, what, in high school, in right? college? In college, right? You mm -hmm. got hurt. You come home and you drop 20 in pro-am game, win the championship. <laughs> what the? Who? Who worked your day, yeah. fam? And yeah, nah, that was a scorer. It counts. Right. Nah, yeah. That that first year when I hurt my knee, you know, that rehab was it was tremendous, man. You know, and then, you know, right after you work on your knee, you know, it's it's stronger, you know, you're able to run faster, jump higher. I was catching alley hoops, dunking back dunk. I was doing all types of stuff after that surgery. Um I think um, you know, playing with Ron Artest though, man. In Queensbridge, it was some, it was something special, you know, especially for him because he never won a, a championship out there. So to get his first wow. championship with me, yeah, it was, it was big. Man. He won NBA champ, he won an NBA championship before he won one in his own hood. Can't even get one in in New York, man. Yeah, hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, Tom, hold on, hold on, hold on, fam. We gonna we gonna make some noise for that right there. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Salute yep. to New York City. <laughs> oh my God. That's crazy. Yeah. So, you know, it was different too. And then when you when you speak to them, you know, it kind of means more. You know, that street ball chip. If you compare that to the, you know, to the NBA chip, he won't tell you which one means more. You know. Um, definitely trying to get yeah. Ron, Ron definitely gotta get met on, on here. My guy was yeah. trying to plug us, but then, you know. We had to, we had to, we, we connected and then we didn't put anything together. But I'm, I'm quite yeah. sure if a guy like you called, be like, yo. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not Definitely. a problem, man. Definitely. Cool, cool. It, you played with some, look, not only you, you, you're a legend in your own right, mm -hmm. but you played with some of the best players in New York City history and still was able to get your shot. Yeah, man. All right, so that yeah, says a lot, brother. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Yeah, man. It's, I mean, it's just a matter of, you know, you know, putting your mind to something and doing it. You know, a lot of times, you know, these kids, they want to see, they want to be somebody that they see, but don't want to put in the work that they putting in. You know, so that's something that they got to change. You know, it's hard, man. You got to, every day you got to work. You know what I mean? So, and then it may not even work out for you when you put in that work. So they got to understand that, you know, it's different. Mm. My guy, uh, Jason Frey, is on the check-in. What up, Jay? What up, Jay? Jay Frey, that's my yeah, big fella. Yeah, he said, uh, if only high school kids could be more mentally prepared for the required transition from high school to college. That's so true, man. I think there needs to be some kind of program to prepare them for that. Right. And then you see how many kids go to one school, then they transfer. They go to another school. They transfer again. Like, because they can't deal with it. And now the transfer like, portal said you can go anywhere you want and play. I'm telling you, man, it messes things up. But it's like, you know, these kids, they're not, they're not built for what we was built for. You know, a, a, a coach that's going to scream down your back, they out. They out. They're not, they not dealing with it. You know, these kids. Kids, they want, the they want to be pampered, right man, here, but and right here, that's not something so, that's going to happen. League, they really don't care about. So the guy, the coach is standing like right here and spitting in your face on purpose to right. see if you move or not. 
Right. Right. They they can't deal with that. They gone. You know, coach might get arrested nowadays. So <laughs> <laughs> So you know, it's, yo, you speak to something y'all so fact, it's so fact, so real. Wow. Yeah. So that's you know, I think I think it just gotta, you know, even though you know it's gonna be something that's gonna be there, we gotta kind of deal with it. But I think some of the kids are getting it. You know, some of the kids are getting it. You know, it's not all kids, but you know, it's it's a lot of them. There's a lot of them out there that's mentally not ready for that. Mm. Wow. So let's talk about your best game at St. John's. Like the best game, like the most memorable game that you had at St. John's that you're never going to forget. And I know there's many, but what's the one that sticks out? Yeah. Um, Which one sticks out? There's a lot of them, man. Damn, that's a tough one. Yeah. Um, I either got to... I'll make the um, noise for that one. Listen, brother, and it's okay if you don't remember. It's all good. Oh, I, Trust me. I remember, I I remember a whole lot of them. It's, I remember a whole lot, man. It's just I don't know which one I want to pick. But it's between um, no, the NC State when we beat them by 20 at the Garden because Julius Hodge was talking trash before that day. You know, the game, oh, man. The day before. What was Julius like, saying? Because you know he's like the <laughs> top big. <laughs> Man, in the hotel, he called our room, just talking trash. Like, man, I ain't got no chance. Just, just, just talking trash. Like, show, I'm locking that up. So <laughs> that that kind of meant a lot because we beat them by 20. And, um, you know, in that game, I kind of had a nice little highlight. I threw it off somebody back and then spin, spin twice and fade away. So that was kind of <laughs> – one of my big games, and then um, the Syracuse one against, you know, um, against Jim Beheim and them, um, you know, Hakeem Warwick. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Tough, tough. Era. Yeah, they were tough. So I had thirty three on them, even though we didn't get the win. But that being the best, you know, zone in the country, I was able to, you know, kill it. So that was a big game for me. Says, uh, I want to say your name wrong again. <laughs> Tigers at the end. I'm gonna say that. Uh, sure it says Show should have been in the league when he came out. Uh, they were down on New York City guys. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Let me tell you, point guard. Let me tell you something. I like Dave Chappelle. I'm a conspiracy theorist to the third power, right? And what I'm saying yeah. is that to walk the the history of New York City, you could tell the NBA and the league, they were on us, right? Yeah, yeah. And then they started to pull back. And, you know, and I guess, and it's not the knock, right? We talk about great point guards from, okay, let's start from uh, Bob Cousy, the Lenny Wilkins, the Tiny yeah. Archibald, the Pearl Washington, then a yeah. flood, like, after like Pearl, it was like a what? floodgate of <laughs> guards coming out of New York City. And I think they had yeah. to slow that shit down. So they came out with something called the Redict Exam. Yeah, yeah. That kind of slowed the pace of that. And they said, we're going to pick and choose who we want after that. Right. You know? Right. And a guard who can score and just the ball from New York City, they kind of scared up. Because once you get to the league, they're going to put you in a box. Right, right. And that's what I thought is too. And then, you know, like you said, they, they was just kind of tired of New York guards, man. At that point, they like, man, you from New York? They're already, like, turning their cheek. Like, oh, oh man. You know what I mean? That Fall Marbury, right? That doesn't I mean, mean he can't play. He's going to try to become huge. If, I, if my knees kept up, Well, that's dope. That's a dope way of looking at it. You're buffering now, so I know the storm is probably picking up. But I want to say, just from talking to you, 
hearing your vibe and your conversation, you don't seem like a bitter dude at all. It seemed like you got the most that you got out of the game, and it's done you well, brother. Just want to say that for sure. You there? Yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, I'm here. No doubt, no doubt, brother. Yeah. Yeah. So, what what kind of impact did uh playing? Yeah, man. That's um. <laughs> that's... Go ahead. No, I was just in um for college doing what I did in college, you know, it you know, of course you're gonna wanna, you know, make it to the NBA, but I think, you know, the fact that, you know, my knee didn't hold up like it's supposed to, you know, because you shoot overseas, man, they had me carrying bricks in my bag, running up steps. I just had microfracture, you know, surgery. I'm like, man, they don't care either. Americans, they gonna run you through the dirt. So Damn. you know I, with that, you know what I mean, and you know, so, you know, you can't take every game off. So I, w I just fought through it, you know. But that kind of, you know, hurt my, hurt my chances because you know it limited me. You know, my knee was kind of bummed up after that. So, um, you know, I, I mean, I still averaged twenty that year. That's the crazy thing. It was just on one leg. <laughs> That's crazy, brother. Your your spirit is amazing. You know, a, a lot of guys who go through some things, and even your, your big bro, uh, Jay Rob, who was on the show. Salute to my guy, Jamal yeah. Robinson. Right? Jay, Jay, so, that's good, bro. From from all the things that he experienced from the game and how he's still loving, how he's still in it, that shows you that New York City players is built for. All right? Exactly. Especially when we got that mental toughness, man. Exactly, yeah. man. So how, how did you connect with the uh, Juice All Stars, and did you know how that how that team came about? Yeah, well, you know, um, the coach, you know, uh, Shangy, you know, with James Black, you know, me and him came up here from New York. You know, once I left college, you know, he was kind of the guy that was, you know, with me working up, you know, working out and, you know, doing everything with me side by side. So. Um, you know, I kind of knew what he was doing. You know, he had the Showtime All-Stars going at first, AAU, you know, named after me, and then, you know, moved on to Juice. But I still have now, a team. Is that, is that connected with Tiny in any way? Oh, no, nah, no. Nah. This is Juice and C, you know. Got um, you, got you, got you, yeah. got you. So it's, it's That's different. what I was confused of. Right. Yeah, it's, to it's totally different, so. Oh, okay. Uh, but, yeah, they, shoot, they they both doing well, though. You know, Indy and New York is both doing well. Um, but I just think, you know, with, with, with how things going now, you know, one thing about juice, they going to get you, they, gonna, you know, they're going to promote every, every day they're going to play us out there. And, you know, when you build a relationship with coaches and scouts and different people, you know, they attract, they attract to that. So, you know, that's the benefit of really going to a juice program. You know, you're going to get that exposure. You're going to play against the top players and you're going to get the best training, of course. <laughs> yeah, man. Yo, this is crazy, right? I forgot to ask this. This is the James Majors question. James Majors was the star of Bishop Lachlan and at Seton Hall yeah. University. Yeah. How much was your guys stipend when you guys went on a road trip? You said, say that again? What was you guys getting for stipend money when you guys went on a road? If you guys did like a week in California somewhere in Vegas. Oh, like a week? I think it was like 60 something like that. Six, $60, $50, something like that. Um, now, listen, it, I ask this question because it amazes me all the time how the bigger universities, and I know, listen, whether you're mid-major, I know I failed at Dickinson. We stayed at the best hotels, but we used to get like a couple of hundred oh, yeah. dollars. But I, and I also know why, right? Because when we take mm -hmm. those trips to play against bigger schools, those schools pay our university. Do you know how that, that goes down? <laughs> I know how it goes, but, you know, that's... Right? They, and this they... is where the word upset comes from. Because they're not <laughs> only upset losing the game, they're upset because they just lost some damn money as well. Money, right. You're right. So they're paying for these wins. So I should be like, why are we getting $250 for this road trip? And yeah. then one day my crew broke it down and explained it to me. Man, crazy. Listen, you was getting the short end of the stick. 
Because, <laughs> <laughs> yo, James Bezos at Seton Hall, they was getting five dollars. Damn, yeah, that's said, now we wasn't getting that. We was getting was pocketing in that money. <laughs> yeah, we was getting like between sixty and a hundred and twenty, maybe like something between that. Okay, okay, that that's decent. Yeah, yeah that's decent. Yeah, yeah, that, that's crazy though, man. Getting five dollars. <laughs> you came for Bob Burger these days. The yeah, dollar Bob bill Burger, wasn't boy. the dollar bill wasn't yeah. out back then. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, bill. <laughs> <laughs> and that's still like nine dollars back then. <laughs> Word. Word. Word up. Yeah, man, yep. change on the counter. <laughs> 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 Yo, so listen, we're all getting to the top three players you played against. The top player in high school, the top player in college, and the top pro you ever played against. All right, um, high school. Um, I would have to go with, man, so many tough, man. There's a lot of tough. I know, I was about to say, boy, you, you pick one, you might be in trouble, boy. It's a lot. Yeah, Woo! it's a lot, man. I don't I don't think I can name one, man. There's so many. I Because, I, I, I mean, I played against everybody that was older than me. Like, when I was playing at ISA with JYO, Billy Medley, you know, um, I was playing against Talik Brown. That's when they had BQE. Talik Brown, Omar Cook, and Andre Barrett. I was, man... So That's it's like <laughs> D Mello say he remember you playing unlimited at twelve and thirteen years old. So yo, you're not lying, bro. You was doing this. <laughs> nobody's playing to... nobody's playing unlimited at twelve and thirteen. I'm telling I you, had my Lord Naismith. He said, Yo, G, we used to put my son in when he was like eight and nine. And it was facts, but that's his son, right? No, nah, my lord you play, you put... My lord will tell you, future will tell you, he, he used to take me to, to the Bronx. You know what I mean? Bring me to the Bronx, play against them. So he knows. He seen me out there when I was twelve in peace, Alamo, Future, Skip to yes. my was all, That was our team. Me, Skip, Future, Alamo. So, like, I was back, you know, back then. They, they got footage of that, too, man. My shirt didn't even fit. <laughs> you couldn't even I'm definitely going to look for that. I'm it's on YouTube? I'm going to send it to you. Bet, bet, that works, that works. All right, college, college. Um, shoot. College, I would have to go with, um, jeez, um, uh, man. You know who was tough? Um, you remember Chris Thomas, Notre Dame? Yes, yes. Yeah, he. I think he gave me like 28, 25. Shooter, shooter, shooter right? Yeah, shooter. Yeah, yeah. Shooter, man. So I think him, he's up there. I can't say he's the best, though, man. There's so many, there's so many up there. But between him, I would say um, J.J. Reddick because I had to run around. I had to run screen, man, screen after screen. I had to run around. Even though, I, you know, I held him to 11. That dude was averaging like, 39 each game that year. So I was just focused on locking him up. He only had 11. I was like, because you know he ain't going back to Southside. Somebody giving you 30. <laughs> on national TV. Trust <laughs> right. me. And people, that, if you don't like playing defense, once you get to college and you meet up with one of these white guys that's getting 99 screens. Oh, you're going to play deep. <laughs> you're going to play some defense or you're going to be sitting you gonna be doing what we doing right now, sitting down. Sitting down talking. Like you see that? You know what I mean? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, but I think JJ Reddick and um probably Chris Thomas, man. But I know I'm missing a lot, you know, but those two nah. probably And and if you wanna count JJ Reddick as that pro too as well, because he did it in the league too. He did it in the league too, man. So but you know, me playing defense, that that was something I always wanted to do too. Almost like I wanted to dribble, like I almost wanted to lock you up because I, you know, that does that do something to your mental. Like if you can't yes. do anything offensively, man, you should have played it down. So that's something I wanted to do. But um, yeah, JJ, man, he's an expert. As soon as he catch that ball, it's over. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> for sure. 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, I said, okay, okay, it was nice at Hillcrest. He said, yeah, big bro was nice at Hillcrest. All right, Trey, he mentioned that for, for sure. So now yeah. we get down to our top five, right? Top five, oh, top, I five, five right? top five, top oh. five, top five, top five. You may hear this music if you start to stumble or can't figure out anybody's name. Yeah. But if you go through it, you good. All right. All right. Top five ballers from Queens. Top five ballers from Queens. In your eyes. Nobody else's eyes except yours. In my <laughs> eyes, Queens. Um, shoot. See, I play, I play up, man. So everything, everybody's older. I play, I play up. Um, it's, it's, it's who you saw, who you think of them? Top five from Queens. I'm gonna go with guards. I'm gonna go with J High. Guards. Um, um, I'm gonna mess with uh, shoot, man. There's so many, man. Uh, this, this is this is it's uh, what I call the I'm top five, baby. Top five. <laughs> um, how about this one. Right. Uh, I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna throw Ryan in there, of course, my boy Ryan. I'm gonna throw him in it. Um. Okay, okay, okay. That's two. That's two. I'm gonna th throw, of course, twenty in there. Big bro. Okay. Um. Shoot, that I play with up. I say, or is it, it could be anybody. Yeah. It could be somebody that came before you. Oh, it could be any. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Oh man, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with players I seen. Kev Young. Okay, okay. You got two more. Oh. Uh, 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 man, Kyle Reeves. Ah, Kyle Reeves. Yes, yes. Uh, Me and Derek Phelps are setting something up. He should be on the show soon. Salute to Phelps. Yes, yeah. Sir. Um, shoot. One more, one more, one more. Top five. I'm going to go with my Balls brother Quinn, man. There you go, Chris. fam. That's it. That's the family matter. That's right. Family matters. Yes, sir. That's right. Show love to big bro. Yes, sir. For sure, for sure, for sure. All right. You ready for this one? Yeah. Top five player from New York City. History. History. Yes. Woo. What you now? Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you a little, give you a little assistance, right? My uh -huh. top five. And it, and it always switch up a little bit, right? Yeah. Pearl Washington at the point guard. Mm. Right? And then I'm going with Rolando Blackman at the two. Mm. Who's been on the show. Salute to my guy, Ro. Mm. Um, I'm going with Lloyd Daniels at the small forward. Oh. <laughs> I'm going with I'm going with Conrad McNasty at the power forward. Rest mm. in peace to my God. That's nasty. Okay? And at the center position, I'm going with the go to NYC. Kareem, Abdul, Jabal. Go to Kansas State. No one is... You got a, my man right here, second team on city. Went to St. Yeah. John. That don't happen. That's not happening now. Yeah, that's... That's tough. Rolando Black women with the Kansas State. That's yeah. not happening now being second team old city, right? Oh, no. Sure. You better be no playing sure. if you're the whole city. <laughs> you're but, right. But I got. There you um, go. Your top five now, show. You know, my five is a little different, man. I'm going to go with um, Stephon Marbury. Woo! Jam guard, backcourt. Him and Sham? Um, oh, that's crazy. 
Yeah, and the Um, the three. Whew. I'm gonna go with um. Dang, that's tough. Um, three, three. Who well, I'm gonna go with for the three? Um, Lamar Odom. Um, at the three. <laughs> Four. Oh, I'm gonna get big boy. I need a big boy. Um. Let's see four. Um. Oh man, I don't know too many bigs. That's um, yeah. That's we we uh. It's uh. Sunita Lady Tiger said Kenny Anderson, Stephon Marbury, Kareem, Connie Hawkins, and Chris Mullins. Y'all had Connie Hawkins and Chris Mullins on my list before. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Has nah, definitely but, come too. And Kenny. Kind of switch him yeah. up every now and again. Yeah, I got to pick Kenny A in there from Queens, man. D. Mello said, Ron Ron at the four, fam. How can you forget? Nah, hello, baby. Well, yeah, hello at the a, four? A, okay, okay. Nah, got you, nah, got nah, you. Nah, hello at the three, and then yeah. Ron Ron at the four. Yeah. yeah. Ron Ron at the four. Yeah. yeah. That works. Yeah. I need a I need a five, but my five ain't going. I don't know. My five, I don't know about the five. Yo, I'm fam, we, we I said we can all share Kareem because no one did it like him. Let me. There's a footage. If I find out, I'll send it to you. Of him in high school. Yeah. He had way in college. He had way more than a hook shot. Kareem was dribbling, shooting jump shots, laying it up like he had the full range of game. I wish I was able to see that, man. I kind of oh, watched on YouTube. YouTube Thomas, fam, it got a lot of yeah, got a lot of old footage on there, man. Like yeah. I can't even watch the new game. I'm I'm sorry. It's hard for me to watch a real a full NBA game today. Yeah, it's it's tough, man. It's tough. You gotta. You I know, try to stick it out, but I watch I watch the fourth quarter. For yeah, when they start playing real. <laughs> yep. Yep. All right, last top five. Last top five, we're gonna get out of here. Uh -huh. Top five hip hop artists. <clears throat> hip hop got for Nas first. Ali Vegas second. Yo, hold on, fam. Hold on, hold on, hold on. See, we gotta talk. We gotta talk right now, cause I don't think we can realize who you just said. Okay? If y'all don't know, go check out some Ali Vegas music. If y'all have no idea who he's talking about, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nas, One of the dopest lyricists in New York City history. Man, he a problem, man. He a problem. We gonna make some noise for Ali Vegas one more time. Yes, sir. Salute. Facts. Hey, Facts. Um, who else can I go with? Uh, of course, Big. I'll okay. Big okay. There. Um, so he, he, from, he from that era. You can just tell he from that era. I'm going to go with Jada and Styles. And he picked Styles. See, th this is why I, I mess with you, show, right? Because most people would say, <laughs> you know, Jada. That's like the quick fix, right? Yeah. I was Styles. telling people about Styles from the beginning. Styles is tough. <laughs> yes, Yo, sir. fam, let me tell you. I, we never met before. We got a chance to meet tonight. I totally vibe out with you, fam. I guess. Yes, sir. sir. Facts. I appreciate Facts. you having me on, too, man. No doubt, man. Yo, I'm glad you was able to come on, and I'm glad you picked Basketball Head to come and do the first interview with, man. I appreciate you so yes, much, sir. brother. Yeah. Yes, sir. But saying that, I want to make sure that we stay in contact. Uh, I'm going to send that picture to you. Because I got to send a lot of artwork out this weekend. Okay. You'll get the original. All right? And you also get okay. uh, a chance to nominate someone like Jay Rob hit you up. It's like, yo, you got to get on basketball head. So you're yeah, allowed yeah, to do yeah, the yeah. same thing. And it's not just one. It's whoever you hit me up with. Because now I know they're official. Right? right I may not gotta, so to get my heard buddy. about them. I can do the research and the homework afterwards. But it's going to be you guys who help me bring uh, New York City together so we can create this history and document right. it and make sure that you get to tell your story before somebody else write it for you. 
All right. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate sure. you. I love to do what I do. Hope y'all can tell. But when you have interviews and you get the chance to meet someone like Showtime, he just brings the best out of every situation. So I want to say salute to you, brother, and everything you did for New York City and still doing to keep New York City basketball alive and document its history. I'm your host, Glenn Poo Hardy, and you've been watching Basketball Head the official home for New York City basketball. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are, you are just now to the world. Hey, hey, y'all.